Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry, a fan channel where everything Dragalia lost can be found. This video is a boss breakdown for Lilith's encroaching shadow on the expert difficulty, this new Rise of the Sinister Dominion quest just released today, and you may have seen earlier today I posted my first ever Master Clear video. Now I wanted to return to Expert and do a video that's not just gameplay only but actually has some commentary because I think this fight is really interesting and tough and for a lot of players Expert may be the hardest difficulty they can take on right now and there's so many mechanics and interesting features to this fight that I felt like this would be a good way to talk about it. So I am using an auto battle team here. This is my auto team that's got about an 80% success rate, but lots of room for growth, no dragon augments, no spiral on Hildegard. So I certainly think that could be better. But as of now, this cleared 30 out of 37 runs. So if you're interested in a initial auto battle team, you can definitely use this one. While the auto battles play out, we're gonna talk about the different mechanics in the fights. We'll do a couple different auto battles. In the second one, I'll share more of my impressions and opinions rather than just a breakdown. All right, so in phase one, we fight against Otherworld Ramiel, and the first thing he does is a Curse Shackles, which puts the Curse of Nihility effect on everybody in your team. That's gonna prevent a lot of basic buffs. The next thing he does is put Creeping Corrosion on the entire team, which does a lot of damage over time that really adds up the more that you have that on you. And then he does some Purple Circles, which you can place and avoid, some Red Circles, which are pretty easy to avoid, this cross attack, which isn't too bad, and Curse Invocation, where he summons four cannons that shoot out flames, and you want to try attack those to reduce the amount of, well, amount of hazards on the screen, really. They're not too bad, you can definitely dodge them, but in a solo context, it is good to get rid of them. The next big move that Ramiel does here is similar to the move that we've seen before in Shishimai's raid. You have to kind of toggle between different lanes, in that dance that he does in order to avoid those attacks. More Curse Shackles, still some obstacles on screen since this is auto battle. And then a homing attack, which you can group up for, but it's really not too big of a problem if you don't. Again, the cross attack, and in the first phase, not much of this is super deadly, but you can get caught off guard by the amount of attacks happening. and. Some of these attacks, if you do stand in the midst of them, are going to do a lot of damage. That close range purple is particularly dangerous if you're trying to do this in manual. Usually in auto, the AI is pretty good at sussing it out and being far away. Some of these close range attacks also with a lead character like Julieta, she's just going to stay away from them, but it is something to be mindful of if you're approaching this with a melee lead character. Now I am using the Agito weapons here and that gives me some passive dragon accumulation over time from my AI. But one thing to point out is the Curse of Nihility effect has a big influence on this fight. Not being able to use units that rely upon most basic buffs, not getting the buffs off the Agito weapon even, that is a huge component of this in addition to the fact that Lilith has higher than normal defense, so this feels like a much tankier fight. You can't rely upon a lot of the tried and true strategies that we're familiar with. Toward the end of this first phase here, we get another of this dance attack, and this is really something you may not see depending on how fast you clear this, but essentially Ramiel is going to rotate through a lot of these same attacks that we've already seen that you can avoid relatively easily once you clear out those cannons in particular. And eventually, once the HP gauge goes all the way down, Ramiel transforms into Lilith. The first thing she does is put on the Curse of Nihility. Then she applies sugar-coated sadism. And now her moves that, uh, that Ramiel would use that would just drop a purple and then it disappear, they actually leave a static purple area. And you may want to place that away from your team if you can. Obviously the AI just kind of places it there. That does tend to hinder Julieta. This crossing candy is another big one. You want to roll toward where the red candy came from. That is the safe zone. Look for where the red candy started. That is where you want to roll. Now, obviously, a lot is happening at once. So if I were in control here, I would roll toward where that red candy started because that is the safe corner of the map. One of the four corners is going to be safe. But since the AI is taking the wheel, you can also see that it is possible to just sort of heal your way through this. And you really do want that because the mix of that big purple AOE plus the Creeping Corrosion that does a lot of passive damage over time is going to be quite painful. I do have Auto Shapeshifting turned on, and 
It is helpful to note that when you are a dragon, your Creeping Corrosion effect is sort of paused. It's not going to eat into your dragon time. Candy Bomb comes out here, the targeted attack. I don't know what's going on with Lilith's candy theme, but that's an innocuous enough attack, and so are these basic red attacks. You see that purple icon above her? When you see that, you do want to try use a damage dealing skill. If you do, you can counter, do a little bit of extra damage to the overdrive gauge. And Sweet Circle here is a big one. This is like the dance attack in the first phase, but Lilith's staff rotates around the arena, creating purple circles. You can go around the arena clockwise and there will be plenty of safe zones if you're careful and sort of pace it out. In Master, it's a lot more strict because whenever the purple uh, AoE pops off from the staff, there is a static black ring that lingers there and then you can't pass through that area anymore. But on Expert, it's a little bit more free form how you want to approach it. You can sort of start at any point on the map as long as you go clockwise and try to avoid it. We're able to get a break and we're able to demolish wings. Demolishing the wings is going to change some of the attacks from purple to red, but I think that's mostly on the master difficulty. If nothing else, you get a little bit of a stagger, so if you can position yourself behind Lilith to attack those wings, that is going to be a good thing. And when it comes to auto setups here, I think that this is a fine one, but I do think there's room for improvement. Some other players have tried characters like Xiao Jing, who has a little bit more HP than Rosarda. One thing to note about Rosarda is that she can't dispel as an AI, so Luca and my shared skill are here for dispelling because Lilith does stack up strength buffs that can be very detrimental. And essentially, I think what can catch you up here is when a lot of attacks happen at once. Now to talk about this one, there's two purple crosses. The second one can be short or long. When it's short, like that, you want to go to the middle. If it goes long, you want to go to the top left and end up behind Lilith. All right, so end of battle one. Hopefully that commentary was helpful to just discuss how some of the moves actually work. In general, the crossing candies, the one that I see trip up a lot of people, these big purple AoEs pop up on the screen all of a sudden and can take you out. And it's hard to tell if you haven't played it a while that you need to roll behind those red candies. And similarly, I think that that uh, dance move with the staff combined in there is also pretty tricky to deal with. You can dragon tank it. There are ways to get around it in expert that become harder to do in master, but just want to point that out. So in this second auto battle, it's two times speed. One thing you're going to see is definitely more of an element of danger. Julietta can die here. That is one of my failure points when all of these cannons are summoned. There's just a lot going on. If I don't get a dragon in time and I'm in a bad spot during this twilight dance, I have seen runs where things just end here. As you can see, it's very close. I think that'll be solved over time with a little bit better dragon augments as well as spiraling my Hildegard, but something to point out if you are more in the auto business than in just trying to get it clear on this. So to talk about my impressions on the fight, Curse of Nihility is very impactful for how this works. I honestly don't mind it too much in this case, but I kind of wish it was a Lilith thing and not a Rise of the Sinister Dominion thing as a whole. Because I do think it's effective for what it does in the water element. It does mean you need different characters than you would traditionally use, but it's so debilitating that you end up having to use a much smaller cast of characters, and I think that that has its drawbacks as well. The Curse of Corrosion is the other big game changer in this, and that does a lot of passive damage over time. Even with the non-spiraled Hildegard, I'm able to heal through it here in an auto context, so outside of auto, you should be able to heal through it. Estelle's another good healer for that. In the Water Element, Ricard and Jiang Xia are good healers for that once you get to the Master difficulty. But it's made healers relevant in a way that they haven't felt in a very long time, and in particular, non-grace healers. So I do respect that. It's interesting, it reminds me a lot of the Plague mechanic when Volk first came out, and how with the Plague mechanic, all of a sudden, healing became relevant again. Now you saw things got a little dicey there for my Hildegard, and I do think that's the lack of a spiral showing itself, but she is certainly a character that I feel like is great to invest in for this. Rosarda is another good character, I think. Luca, because of the Dispel. Dispel in Light and Water is rare. In Water, it's basically Feeny, the new character, and Lapis. 
and in light it's basically Rosarda and Luca. That's also helpful for those strength buffs that accumulate. The fight just tests us in a lot of different dimensions and ways that past battles haven't. It does feel a little restrictive, it does feel a little cumbersome, and there's definitely a grind element. To pause for a sec here, that prison was a move I don't think we saw last time. That is a move that you want to have dragon save for if you can, or skill save for, because that can also be a run killer. You can heal through it, especially on expert, but that is a pretty deadly move, and usually it'll trap the furthest AI, a ranged AI of some sort, but in combination with corrosion as well as that move and purple AoEs, you definitely can take a lot of damage really fast. So Corrosive Fog comes back here, and we're just about ready to wrap up the fight, I think, and get this second clear. So as you can see, if you look at the right of the screen, this was 30 out of 30 on my auto battles. Did this fight 37 times in total, and seven of those were failures. So I do think this is a pretty solid team setup if it's something you want to use. That is going to do it for today, everyone. Definitely expect more thoughts on Lilith's Encroaching Shadow in the coming days. Gonna try clean up my master clear, get my rotations down to post more of an updated video on that and talk about the mechanics there as well. Hopefully this breakdown was helpful for you. I know it's a little bit informal. Let me know what you think in the comments below. That is going to do it though. So take care and I'll see you next time.